Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kim Shepard. I am a pediatric prenatal chiropractor with Align Family Wellness in Forsyth, Illinois. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar about how to avoid a difficult labor with chiropractic care. So we're gonna be going over lots of things about your body. We're gonna be going over anatomy. We're gonna be going over how the baby kind of gets into your pelvis and comes out. So it's gonna be a lot of anatomy, but hang with me. It's gonna be great information and you're gonna learn a lot about why you need a pediatric and prenatal specialized chiropractor on your team when you are pregnant. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about is all things pregnancy and chiropractic. I'm gonna tell you why you need to have chiropractic care, when you should start chiropractic care. Hint, it is before you even get pregnant. Um, and you can have chiropractic care until you're literally in labor. It is absolutely safe for the baby when you get a chiropractor who is specialized in pregnancy. So we're gonna talk about preparing your body and baby for birth. We're gonna go through the Webster technique. Um, it's a special certification that certain chiropractors have um, to help optimal position for the baby during pregnancy and labor. Um, and I am one of the certified providers. So we're also gonna talk about dystocia. So dystocia is um, a difficult labor. Or childbirth, basically. Um, it can be a challenging experience for moms. It can give some moms PTSD. If they have had a difficult labor, um, a stalled labor, baby gets stuck, shoulders get stuck, this can be very traumatizing for mom and baby. Um, some causes can be physiological or biomechanical causes. Um, we're going to go through that a lot today on like how the pelvis is formed and how the baby gets through the pelvis. Um, emotional stresses. I know a lot of OBGYNs don't really talk about stress and how that um, is important during birth for mom and even during pregnancy. And we're going to talk about some medical or technical errors that can cause um, a difficult childbirth. So let's look at the pelvis and some biomechanical causes. So William Obstetrics um, is considered the world's premier obstetric guide, and it defines the following three reasons for dystocia. Number one is power, number two is passage, number three is passenger. We're gonna go through this in detail. So what this basically means is power is the forces. Passage is where the baby comes through. Passenger is the baby or babies themselves. So power can mean abnormal or expulsive forces. So they can be either the uterine contractions are not strong enough, or they're not coordinated enough to efface and dilate the cervix. So when we're looking, you know, when you're at your 37 week plus mark and they're trying to check for effacement and if you're dilated, your Braxton Hicks contractions or your just, you know, low, low contractions that you're having is your uterus kind of helping that cervix efface and dilate. We need baby's head pushing against the cervix. So if baby's not in a good position, if baby's not allowed to push down on that cervix and we don't get that dilation and effacement. So we can also have inadequate muscle effort during the second stage of labor. Contractions aren't strong enough. How many times have you heard that? That like, well, my contractions weren't strong enough and I wasn't progressing. And so they gave me Pitocin or they moved me on to um, a C-section. So those are some of the reasons that power can be involved in an actual abnormal um, difficult birth. So let's kind of look at um, some of the dysfunctional contractions. So there are two types of dysfunctional contractions, hypertonic contractions, and those happen during the latent phase of labor. They can be frequent, but they're ineffective and they can prolong this phase of labor. Hypotonic contractions are during that active phase of labor. You are actively in labor, but they are weak, they're insufficient, or they're absent, and they can often be due to an overstretched uterus. So, you know, some mamas that have had multiple births or have carried twins before, sometimes they do have an overstretched uterus. So some more biomechanical causes. We're gonna look at the uterus. So I have a little picture down here. Um, the uterus is this hollow muscular organ. Um, the function relies significantly on nerve intervention from what's called the inferior hypogastric plexus and the uteral vaginal plexus. So basically that's just a lot of anatomy terms for the muscles are moved because of the nerves. 
So this complex innervation includes both parasympathetic fibers from the lower, like this is called the pelvic splenic nerves, S2 to S4, and they are crucial for coordinating the muscle contractions necessary for labor. So let me break this down for you. What this basically means is parasympathetic fibers. Parasympathetic is our rest and digest nervous system. If we are stressed out, then these nerves don't function like they should. We need to be relaxed for these nerves in S2 to S4, which is kind of down in your sacrum area, to coordinate those muscle contractions necessary for labor. If they are not coordinated, we're back to that dysfunctional contraction. We don't have the power we need to get that baby out of there. So these muscles need to contract. We need to open up this cervix so baby can pass out and we can have a beautiful vaginal delivery. So the goal of a chiropractic treatment in this phase is to minimize interference in the nervous system, get you relaxed, get you in that parasympathetic nervous system. And we're trying to eliminate stress from the spinal column. So we get a lot of stuck stress in our spine, pregnant or not pregnant. And a lot of times that's called subluxation. Basically what that means is joints don't move well. We have a ton of changes going on in our body during pregnancy. Our organs actually shift, our weight changes, our breasts grow. So that puts a lot of stress on the spine. And we also are trying to influence muscle function everywhere in the spine, in the core, but also affecting the uterus. And we'll kind of show you how that works. So basically the term power refers to the muscle function by the nerves and we address the nervous system and the nerves in our adjustments. That is literally what we do. We affect the muscles, we affect the nerves, we affect the joints. Okay, so passage, this is number two. Passage are basically abnormality, can mean like abnormalities of the maternal bony pelvis. So these abnormalities can refer to conditions that reduce the size of the pelvic diameter and they can cause dystocia, difficult labor. Most of you don't know if your pelvis is dysfunctional or not. It's really, unless you've had a baby before or you've had some kind of CT scan, we don't know. But a displaced sacrum, which is kind of that triangular bone, I'll show you a picture of it later. Um, if that is not moving well, it can decrease the pelvic diameter, thereby complicating labor. That sacrum kind of rocks backwards during labor. And if that sacrum is not sitting in the right place and it can't rock and open up that pelvic bowl, then we're going to have it stuck and baby's going to get stuck. So, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard this, but birthing on our backs is not how we should be birthing. It closes down that pelvic inlet, especially with our knees out. That actually closes the pelvis. So we need to have our knees in and that opens up our pelvic inlet. So we have more room for the baby. But most of you, if you are birthing in a hospital, they're gonna tell you, you need to birth on your back. Um, a lot of nurses are much better about knowing this is not um, appropriate and they will move you around in the bed um, but once you have, you know, medication, Pitocin and epidural, they're not going to give you much chance to move around. Okay, so the pelvis comes in several shapes, each with unique characters, characteristics that can influence childbirth. So, so the gynecoid pelvis is most common. This is what most of us have. have. It's ideal for childbirth. Birth. It's got a rounded shape and wide angles. So it's beautifully round. We've got wide angles through here. This is what we want our pelvis to look like. This gives a baby plenty of space to come through. And you can see the sacrum here. So imagine if that sacrum was tipped a little bit, it would cut off some of the space that this beautiful baby would have to come through. So an android pelvis is narrow. So you can see how much more narrow it is here with a heart shape. So sometimes that's gonna slow down baby's descent because they're gonna get tied up here in this narrow part. Um, so this is, is a harder, more narrow pelvis to kind of be able to have that baby come through. A platypeloid pelvis is kidney shaped. It's wider side to side. So the baby may have to adjust its head position to engage down and through the pelvis. Sometimes the baby has to turn its head sideways to get down in there and engage the cervix a little bit more. An anthropoid pelvis is narrow and deep. 
So it is more narrow, but it is a lot deeper. So if you think of like an upright egg or an oval, so it is suitable for childbirth, but it may lead to a posterior position baby. So that basically means they are facing the wrong direction and we kind of call that sunny side up. Um, so that could be a possibility if you have an anthropoid pelvis. So, but despite these variations, women give birth all day, every day, and nobody knows what their pelvis shape is like. So we just want to want you to know that your pelvis is adaptable and baby's head is adaptable. And so that pelvis can open and change. So just know that if you do have one of these, you know, different shapes of pelvis, it doesn't necessarily mean you cannot have a vaginal birth. So at Align Family Wellness, um, we feel like our body will not grow a baby. It doesn't believe it can't birth. It's just nature. Trust your body. Trust your body's intelligence. You know, you can birth this baby um, if God gifted you the ability to carry that baby in your tummy. Okay, so passage again. Displacement of the pelvis are referred to as spinal misalignments or subluxations. We kind of talked about that earlier. Um, a lot of this can be stress or trauma. So, you know, you have, you're sitting too long, you, um, you know, you fell, you have weak muscles, you have had a, you know, trauma earlier, a car accident when you were a teenager. So chiropractic adjustments aim to correct these misalignments and we approve of improved pelvic alignment and biomechanics. So basically we put gentle movement into the pelvis to align it and allow for proper biomechanics. Better alignment equals alleviating passage abnormalities, which equals a smooth, smoother childbirth. So basically, adjustments allow for great biomechanics, which allow for a great smooth childbirth. Okay, so on to passenger. Passenger or abnormalities of presentation, position, or development of the fetus. So fetal position refers to where the presenting part of the baby, which is usually the head, is in the mom's pelvis. So we can have a cephalic birth, um, which is their head. We could have a breech birth, which they could be feet first, or their shoulders could be coming first. Pelvis alignment influences baby's positioning, and chiropractic adjustments play a, I would almost say, crucial role in proper positioning for birth. Um, we always say we work on the pelvis so that baby has more room so baby can get in optimal position. We do not turn babies. We do not, you know, do anything in with the abdomen that would be considered obstetric care. Um, you know, they do that external cephalic version, but we help the pelvis open up more space in that pelvis so baby can get down and get in good space. So pelvic imbalance or sacral misalignments create tension in the ligaments and muscles. This can lead to abnormal tension in the uterus and can affect baby's positioning. So here's our uterus. And so you can see how closely the spine is related to the uterus. So when we have issues here, it's going to affect the torque on that uterus, um, you know, especially via this uterosacral ligament. And we'll kind of show a better picture of that later. So here's some important structures. The broad ligament, I'm gonna try to move me. I don't know if you guys can see when I move myself. So this is the broad ligament. It's highlighted in green. It's not really green in your body. This is just highlighted. It spans like through the entire um, pelvis and it actually functions more like, it's called mesentery or just like a little support system, supports the uterus. So we've got the uterus here and it's coming out. Here's our ovaries, here's our fallopian tube. There's a little egg dropping down. So this actually acts like a little hammock and supports our uterus. So it's got two layers that surround the uterine tube and it encompasses the ovarian ligament and the round ligament. And it contains parametrium, which is the connective tissue that supports the uterus. And it assists in maintaining the normal position of the uterus. So this really helps keep that uterus in good positioning. Okay, move myself back. Okay, round ligament. Every, most of you, I don't want to say everybody, a lot of you have heard of the round ligament. So here is a picture of the round ligament. We work on it every day on our mamas in our office. It extends from the uterus 
and it maintains a crucial role in maintaining the antiverted position of the uterus. It kind of helps keep it lay a little bit more forward. Tension in this ligament keeps the uterus stable. It prevents the uterus from dropping backwards. It ensures proper positioning of the fetus and it contributes to timing of birth. So this round ligament is super important. It is, it does attach to your pubic bone. For, so those of you with lightning crotch or having a lot of, you know, just pubic bone pain, we work a lot on your pubic bone and the round ligament to help relieve some tension um, in that actual ligament. So here's the uterosacral ligaments again. Um, it's right here with this red arrow it attaches from the sacrum to the uterus. It's made of connective tissue and smooth muscle. It prevents the uterus from moving anterior and inferior. So the stability is crucial for preventing premature contractions and proper baby positioning in the birth canal. So if that uterus moves too much when it shouldn't, it's going to stimulate premature contractions. So abnormalities in sacral position can lead to tension in the uteral sacral ligaments, which can cause baby positioning issues. So what that means is if this uterosacral ligament has tension, it may put a little pressure on the uterus and cause the uterus not maybe to turn a little bit or not to be able to open fully so baby can get in the perfect position. Okay, so here's a perfect picture of the sacrum right here. So here's the end of your spine. Here's your sacrum, and this is kind of the front view of your sacrum. When we talked about S2 to S4 last time, those are these sacral vertebrae that kind of look like little notches right here. So what happens when we adjust your pelvis and your sacrum? So for the power portion, that nervous system stress reduces is reduced enhancing muscle function. So when you have stress in your nervous system, everything kind of shuts down. So when we adjust it, we're actually giving you power because we're enhancing that muscle function. Proprioceptor activity is restored. That's just kind of your body knowing where it is in space. A lot of my mamas are a little bit off balance um, when they are pregnant. So dural tension is alleviated when working with S2. So the dura is actually where the spinal cord um, kind of comes down and makes like little horse hairs. And so it tension on that uh, when we work on this S2 area can be released and mamas feel a lot of pressure release from their spine. And then that fight or flight system activity is decreased. Normal muscle tone and function is then restored. So for the passage, that pelvic balance causes optimization, allowing for maximum space in the pelvis. We're adjusting the pelvis to just open it up and give it more room. And then for baby passenger, normal tone is restored to the ligaments. We have less tension and baby can get in the best possible position for birth, which is what every mama wants to hear that baby is head down and ready to go. So um, we are always addressing pelvic alignment with our care plans and our adjustments with our mamas. Sometimes there are reasons that baby will not go head down. We have to trust our body. We have to trust our baby but we need to start your treatments early so we can keep a close eye anytime there's an issue with baby's positioning. Some moms won't tell me if they find out that their baby is breached. They just, for some reason, didn't think to tell me. These are important, important things I need to know. Um, I've had a couple babies not turn. I've not had that many um, that haven't turned, but um, one had a short cord. So they're, um, umbilical cord was short and so they could not actually um, get in the right position because then it would decrease the flow of that um, nutrition to the baby. So the baby knows. So we um, we do three-ish weeks of adjustments to see if we can't get baby in good position. If baby doesn't turn, there's a reason and um, we try not to force that. So um, you know, it's, it's just, it is what it is, but we do our very, very best to keep that baby in great position from the start. And sometimes we know if baby doesn't turn, um, there may be an actual physiological reason for that. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the emotional stress part. Um, hormonal stress is huge. So stress triggers the release of hormones like cortisol. Stress hormones actually can cross the placenta and affect the baby. 
And we um, do some scans in our office that can actually tell how stressed you are during pregnancy. But we also scan baby when baby's here. And if there's been a stressful pregnancy, we automatically see that baby is more stressed than mamas that don't have stressful pregnancies. High cortisol levels have been associated with changes in baby's, baby's brain development. Um, and that can impact their stress response after birth. So we don't want anybody to be stressed. So stress in pregnancy is linked to an increased risk of preterm birth and low birth weight. This can cause health problems in newborns and can have long-term effects on child development. So we really, really, really want to keep our stress in check um, when we're pregnant. So there is a higher risk of emotional and behavioral problems in children um, due to the impact of stress hormones on the brain with kiddos who have been under stress in utero. Um, these are things like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and sensory processing disorder. And we don't want any of those things for your wonderful children. So stress in pregnancy can also affect their cognitive development. It can lead to difficulties in learning, memory, and attention later in childhood. So epigenetic changes. Epigenetics is a pretty much new science that basically tells how our genes are expressed. So stress can change our gene expression. So our lifestyle determines how our genes express issues that are linked to our genetics. So, you know, you hear people say, well, my whole family is obese, so I'm going to be obese. Understand genetics load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So some of these things can be prevented, but understand in a growing, in a pregnant mother, you are carrying three generations of cells in your body. So you are the first generation, your fetus is the second generation, and their growing reproductive cells are your future grandchildren. So you are actually creating um, a second and third generation when you are pregnant. And so we really, really want to be careful with um, our lifestyle choices, stress, um, the obviously smoking on here. Um, you know, most moms don't smoke and drink, but it's, it's our eating, our sedentary lifestyle, those in just packaged processed food. Those are the things we're seeing now that are affecting gene expression. So how do we measure your stress in pregnancy? This is really, really cool. This is a picture from my office of an actual pregnant mom getting our heart rate variability scan. Um, we can aid in supporting you and allow your nervous system to rest and recover. These scans have no emissions. They are absolutely safe for mama. They are safe for babies. They are safe on newborn babies. But this heart rate variability is just great technology that tells us how stressed you are. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of things that are measuring heart rate variability now. Um, like I wear an aura ring um, there's things called whoops. Um, Apple watches will sometimes measure your heart rate variability, but this is very, very accurate in real time that we're getting. And we have a beautiful graph that kind of shows us some information on how stressed your nervous system is. So the best picture of baby we want baby facing backwards. So the anterior occiput position means your baby's head is pointing down, but his back is facing out and his face is looking towards your spine. So that's what we call a optimal position. We want baby's head looking towards our spines. So Webster technique is a chiropractic technique designed to correct sacral misalignments and improve function of the nervous system. So our whole focus is on pelvic balance. So a misaligned pelvis can cause tension in muscles and ligaments, which can affect baby's position in the womb. It can also help with sciatica, lower back pain, and that horrible pubic bone pain or lightning crotch. So make sure your chiropractor is specifically trained and experienced in Webster technique. Um, there are a lot of chiropractors out there that say they do Webster, but we want to make sure they've actually been through the coursework and understand what's happening. Um, it is our specialty at Align Family Wellness to care for pregnant mamas. I have been Webster certified for a number of years, um, and it's just the way we care for pregnant moms is so different from other chiropractors who don't care for pregnant moms all day long. So I always say come in sooner than you think you need to. Don't wait till you find out your baby has breached in week 37 and you are going to be forcing a C-section. 
that puts us under a time bomb. Come in as soon as you are expecting. Come in before. Let's walk through this pre, um, you know, preconception journey with you. We can measure your stress. We can measure your heart rate variability. We want you in a certain zone three months before you actually get pregnant so that we can ensure great egg quality so that you can carry that baby to term. And we walk through that with all of our moms um, in preconception and we just care for you at all stages throughout your pregnancy. This is a very, very special time. There is not a lot of things you can do when you're in pain. I don't love to talk about pain, but the truth is mamas hurt and they come in for care. And so we want to care for you during this special time. And we want to stay on top of your pain so that you can be strong enough and healthy enough to have a great delivery. Um, and we just, we just love caring for you. And we love to see your newborn baby um, here at Earthside and take care of them too. So after this, you will receive some more information and some emails to follow. You can call our office if you'd like to schedule an appointment. Um, please follow us on Instagram. We have a ton of videos on how we adjust pregnant mamas, how we um, do our scans, our office process on, you know, why we um, do the things we do, how we do our day one and day two. You can like our Facebook page. You can also email us. Um, our email is aligned fam wellness. So just be aware of that, um, that it's aligned fam wellness at gmail.com. Everything else is aligned family wellness. So um, get a hold of us, you know, DM us on Instagram, you know, send us messages, you know, we'll answer any questions that you have. We would love, love to care for you. So we are so appreciate of you attending this webinar. Um, we appreciate your time and just, we hope you learned some stuff about birth and how babies, you know, can kind of come, come into this world. And we just hope that you have a wonderful labor and we would love to support you during this time, um, before delivery or even after delivery. So, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here and more information will, um, come soon for you to, learn more about our office and what we can actually um, do for you. So thank you so much. Um, until next time.